Well, I haven't. I, I don't know him to start with as a person, but obviously I, I see the development that Ajax took since he was there. I also know a little bit about his work that he did when he was uh, with Bayern Munich, and uh, that he's one of the the top coaches in Europe is obvious. But there are a few other top coaches in Europe. But as I said, we haven't spoken about any new manager so far, uh, and therefore we also didn't speak about him. I've been waiting a long time to do this video, and now it's here. This video is going to be all about Eric Ten Hag, his coaching philosophy, his principles, what shaped him and developed him as a coach so far in his career, and what could happen if he came to Manchester United. What sort of tactics would he bring? What shape would it be? I'm going to run through all of this in this video. I did one of these on Ralph Ranick before he, came, he became our interim manager. It was really well received. I did a couple on Brendan Rodgers as well and Zinedine Zidane, but this one's all about Ten Hag. So please, if you would consider, subscribe to United People's TV. Go down there, hit that subscribe button. As well as that, hit that notification bell as well. Get involved in the channel, become part of the community. These videos do take significantly longer to make, but I feel they really do help bring insight and information into what might be a confusing situation for most Manchester United fans. So drop a like on the video. Let's get into this one. Right then, let's talk about Eric. And we can only really begin on listening to Eric talk about his own principles as a manager. You know, what is his motto? My motto is good is not good enough. It must be better. When you listen to Eric Ten Hag speak and his interviews that he's done with Ajax's official YouTube channel and anything else, he's definitely a man that's driven by pretty damn high standards. And that's something that Manchester United desperately need. We need somebody to bring our standards up and Ten Hag is someone who, who carries a sort of charisma and personality. Because that's another big word associated with, with Ten Hag or Poch or the right manager, personality. Ten Hag's definitely got all of that in abundance. And that there, his motto, is good is not good enough. It's not good enough for Manchester United. We haven't even been good. And that hasn't been good enough. So we need someone to bring the standards up. You can tell right there immediately Ten Hag is a man who's driven by his own standards and what he would expect of players. That's a good thing. But how does he see himself as a manager? This is an interesting little comment. I think that I for all myself am. And I am not a copy of another. And I think that it's important for a coach. Is. You can speak and you can learn a lot from very inspiring coaches. But the most important thing is you must put the middle in that are close to yourself. Want anders dan speel je theater, speel je spel en uh, ja, dan prikken spelers zo doorheen en dan verlies je heel snel je autoriteit. Now I particularly like that comment there from Ten Hag. The idea that you know it doesn't matter about your Guardiola's and your Klopp's and your Cruyffs and, and the managers that have certainly helped inspire Ten Hag. He wants to create his own sort of legacy under his own name, and I really really like that. He, he wants to sort of craft his own path rather than being. A, a Cruyff V2 or, or a Klopp V2 or a Guardiola V2, as I said there, he wants to leave his own philosophy and his own legacy behind. And the idea of authority there is a very important one again, and that's something that Manchester United desperately need, a man and a manager who can carry the sort of respect and authority and bring that through, because every manager at Manchester United really has been undermined for a long time. And that's come down to the, from the board level through all the players as well. Ten Hag, if he's going to be successful at Manchester United, if he does join Manchester United, he's got to have that authority. And for him, that's his own identity as a manager. That's a really important part of him. And in this little snippet here, he's speaking about his former coach at FC Twente, Fred Rutten, and how he helped shape his personality, I suppose, and how they can sort of compare as individuals. He has formed as a player, but also as a trainer. Our characters match. And in that sense, uh, hij is wat introverter, wat bedachtzamer. Uh, ik ben wat extraverter, uh, wat uitbundiger. So Ten Hag there, saying he's a bit of an extrovert rather than an introvert. If we're looking at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, it's kind of the opposite. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was somebody who sort of kept himself to himself, quite introverted in his personality. Uh, Jose Mourinho, extrovert, is that the word I would use? I was just outspoken, really. An extrovert, what, what sort of personality do you think this squad needs? Because we've had... The arm around the shoulder in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We've had Ralph Radnick, who I would never call an extrovert, but he's someone who's extremely intelligent. We need a bit of a balance of both. And I swear, on paper, Ten Hag sort of slots in there. Somebody who carries a sort of charisma and has the intelligence, but also has a slightly extrovert personality. So maybe the squad could relate to him a little bit more. I don't know. What's your take on that? 
But that's Ten Hag's own take on his own personality and the extrovert nature of it. But in this next little comment, Ten Hag makes it clear one side of his life that's hugely important to him. That's his family. I knew that I still have and of course, they are the two great supporters for me. And ja, inderdaad, die hebben je ontzettend veel meegegeven. Ja, en, um, uh, en als ik allemaal denk ja, wat het allemaal is, ja, daar is te veel om op te noemen. Zoveel lessen uh, van, ten aanzien van vasthoudendheid en, en doorzetten en, um, en geduld hebben en, um, en loyaliteit. Now for me, this snippet here is quite a core and fundamental part of who Ten Hag is both as a man and as a manager. He's somebody who values his family highly. His parents, he had a stable sort of upbringing in that sense. Still, I believe both his parents are still alive and, and he values the relationship that he's built with them. And he's got a wife, he's got three kids. He talks about patience, he talks about loyalty. That really comes across in how he coaches and how important personal relationships are for him. He doesn't want to be in a squad which has players undermining him, going behind his back. He demands trust. He demands loyalty. And they are core parts of what makes him a coach, what makes his football team at Ajax. Probably a big problem he's going to have at Manchester United straight away. Let's be completely honest. It's, it, it feels like trust and loyalty. Are they two words you can really associate with a lot of that United squad? I'm not sure. But there's certainly principles that Ten Hag would bring in. And if we were to talk about the beginnings of what would happen at, with him at Manchester United, how hard would it be? I mean, it would be difficult, but how hard was it at Ajax? This is what Ten Hag said about his start at Ajax. Ja, begin is altijd lastig in die zin dat je je kent de club niet, hè? je kent de krachtenvelden niet, je kent je spelers nog niet. Um, nou, ik kwam toen nog in een gegeven situatie. Um, nou ja, dan ga je vervolgens moet je aan het werk gaan. En ja, voordat je je ideeën hebt geprojecteerd op je spelersgroep en voordat ze die ideeën hebben aangenomen, ja, daar gaat tijd overheen. En, Ja, als, speler ben je geen, of als trainer ben je geen tita tovenaar. Al uh, denken bepaalde vormen van media en publiek die denken dat het wel zo functioneert. En dat je even een team op het veld neerzet en dat gaat automatisch goed spelen. Eric Ten Hag really is um, he's a bit of a realist, I suppose, is a word I would use. When you listen to him speak, you know, a coach can't work any magic. You know, he does understand about uh, the difficulties of bringing balance into a squad, into a new team, into a new environment. And that didn't happen straight away at Ajax. The project that he's been on has been a project. It's been a long-term project, but he's done it. He's done it very well, and he's done it in his own way with his personality. And it's been very successful at Ajax. Now, the real question is whether that same principle and those same principles brought over to Manchester United, would he have as much success? Questionable. There's a big fear of United fans that it just wouldn't work at Manchester United in the same way that it worked at Ajax. But you listen to him speak, something that really, really comes across. You know, in the way, the same way that I said, when it comes across from Randick, his, his intelligence, he's very astute. You can sit there and you can listen to him and it feels like you're learning from him. This man is very much driven by his own principles and how they make him as a man and how he wants that to be reflected in the players that are around him. So sort of like building a family as such. And, and definitely United need that sort of togetherness, that loyalty inside that squad. So in that sense, could very much be successful if that works at United anyway. Certainly in the same way it has at Ajax. Now taking another look at the influences on Ten Hag. One big one is of course Pep Guardiola. Because he went back into UT. I think he was an assistant manager and then he went took a few steps back and went in and became a youth team coach at Bayern Munich. And it's something he heralds as a major reason that he is a coach he is today. But how did Guardiola sort of influence him? Guardiola, die wil dus ook winnen, maar dat moet op een mooie manier. Dat moet dus met goed voetbal en aanvallend voetbal. Dat heeft hij denk ik vooral ingegeven gekregen door Cruyff. En dat weet ik ook. Dat heeft hij mij ook gezegd. Dat hij is gevormd. Um, als speler en later als trainer door Johan Cruijff. En uh, een bepaalde facet heb ik meegenomen. En dus hoe hij zijn elftal laat spelen. Um, en altijd denken op een andere manier, maar altijd aanvallend. Ten Hag, Guardiola, Cruijff, all linked. All sort of influenced, not by each other, but from Cruijff to Guardiola and from Guardiola to Ten Hag and the same principles that have been brought through. Everybody knows that, that the Cruyff is, 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 that, is the fundamental core of the Ajax tradition. 
Uh, and Guardiola has certainly taken quite a lot of that at Barcelona as a player and throughout his entire career. And Ten Hag has learned from that. And that should get United fans rubbing their hands, hands together. Guardiola, you, you know, obviously no one likes what he's doing at City, but he is an incredible manager. And the teams he has, he's built them up in his style. Not, obviously, he has great players there, but Guardiola is a great coach. And Ten Hag has learned from him and some of the principles there and the attacking philosophy. That's what Manchester United fans want to hear. That's why Mourinho jarred so much. Attacking is a fundamental core of Ten Hag. It's not all of his style, which we're going to explain in a little bit more detail as we get into the video. Get into the video. We're like 15 minutes in now. We're in the video now. But I like hearing that, that Ten Hag has been influenced by Guardiola. He's not, as I said, he's not going to be a Guardiola V2, but he's taken sort of what he sees as the best bits from Guardiola, pulled it out and put it into his own style. I like that. And of all the things I've heard from Ten Hag doing the research for this video, it's this one here which I find the most fascinating in terms of how he values personal relationships compared to winning trophies and titles. Weet dit moment nog heel goed? Ja, dit was in Madrid, in uh, na afloop. Ah, ik vind deze momenten, dit moment vind ik mooi, nog dan een titel. Hè, om, ja, dat zegt iets over hè, de onderlinge band die je hebt. Ja, die zijn voor mij belangrijker hè, dan welke titel ook. En ondanks dat titels voor mij, hè, uiteindelijk speel ik daarvoor, hè, is het daar eigenlijk alleen maar om te doen. Maar uiteindelijk, um, ja, de band die met mensen opbouwt, hè, die is nog vele malen belangrijker hè, dan welke titel dan ook. Yeah, I, I, that bit there I found really fascinating. The idea that Ten Hag values personal relationships more than titles. Now, maybe he's exaggerating slightly somewhat there because I think he loves winning a bit of silverware there. But it's interesting that he says that, right? And I think, again, that really goes some way to explain the sort of manager that he is. He's, not, he's like, like the opposite of Jose Mourinho in that sense. Mourinho would... Let's be completely honest. He would sour any personal relationship and as long as he won a trophy at the end of the season. Ten Hag seems to be the complete opposite in that sense. Somebody who really values the importance of building these relationships and the success that can come off the back of them. And I think that could be a massive reason why that sort of personality is needed inside Manchester United. So it's another big tick for me. But we can hear all day long about, you know, Ten Hag and his personality, his fundamentals, his core beliefs. What sort of football is he going to play at Manchester United? We all know it's going to be the, hopefully, the Ajax style if he does come in. But what are the core principles, I suppose? As you see, win, but you want to win on a certain way. And you want that the people have the sense. And that would like to also have the sense. And that should probably be more music to the ears of United fans. You know, it's all about style. It's about doing it in the right way. It's about building on the principles of his football. Everybody at United, we've got the chart for it. Attack, attack, attack. It's the way we want United to play. It's the way we've, well, we've been spoilt by the diet of Sir Alex Ferguson and the football that he gave us. And that's what we all want to get back at Old Trafford over the next few years. And he's certainly a man who is driven not just by silverware, not just by personal relationships, as we've just discussed there, but also by the style in which it happens. And a big, big part of all of that is the teamwork. This bit in particular, I found quite interesting. Ik begin met een inbal, waar we ook veel op hebben getraind. En dan de actie natuurlijk Hakim met Quincy. En uiteindelijk wordt Toussaint erin betrokken. Ja, loopacties, de veldbezetting, hier de 1-2. Quincy met Dusan en daar de derde man. Ja, Aanvallend boekje, plaatje. Waarom is dit typisch Ajax? Ja, dit zit zoveel frivoliteit in. En, maar wel op basis van samenspel. En teamwork is such. has been such a big problem at Manchester United for so long, hasn't it? We've been a team who's gained a reputation for individual moments of brilliance. Rarely over the last three to four to five years could you see a, a performance from Manchester United and go, that was a complete team win. Everybody to a man were, was involved in the goals and the build-up and the defending. Everybody played as a unit. And it has happened. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. West Ham was a very good example, the 1-0 under Ragnick. But that teamwork, everybody coming together, it's all built on the personal relationships. It's all built on the loyalty. It's all built on the trust, which a squad doesn't quite have at the moment. And it's the sort of the characteristics that have definitely been missing. So again, hearing his, how much importance he places on that teamwork stems from 
who he is as a man, but also what we need as a manager. So again, another tick. Moving on to the next point here. We can talk about Ten Hag, you know, as a human, as a man, as a manager. What's he like as a coach? What's he like on the training ground? Because training, the majority of his work on a week-to-week -week basis, right? This bit, he sort of gives a bit of an insight into how important he sees training and the fundamentals behind training. En voordat je daar bent, ja, je moet toch nee, een juiste balans zien te vinden. Ja, dat, dat kost gewoon tijd. En, en dat gaat met vallen en opstaan. En, en, uh, ja, en in dat vallen dan komen natuurlijk de kritische geluiden. En ja, die horen er ook bij. En ja, daar, daar moet je mee omgaan. En wat belangrijk is, um, je eigen weg te blijven volgen. En dat wil niet zeggen dat je niet naar andere mensen moet luisteren. Maar... Als je als trainer van Ajax uh, je, uh, je oor laat hangen en na al die geluiden en bewegingen om je heen, ja, dan ben je wind van. Dan ga je alle kanten op, maar uiteindelijk dan zullen de spelers het niet meer begrijpen. Now I know that I'm basically pro Ten Hag, so I, I, I love a bit of Ten Hag propaganda, but I just, I like the way he speaks, I like the words he uses, he talks about balance, he talks about, you know, repetitive, that's what training is. Repeat it 10 times in training, it's dead easy when you do it the weekend. And, and, and we've asked, looking at our set pieces, we're like, what do Manchester United do in training? There's no doubt that we've improved our defence. I mean, on paper, under Ralph Rannick, uh, conceding less, but we're looking pretty horrendous still. There's, there's just not many players that really look that much better at Manchester United after we signed them. We're like, what do we do in training? Ten Hag is a man who has developed a ton of players at Ajax. I don't need to list them off for you. You know them all. But it's a huge part of his coaching style, his coaching philosophy, and what, what, what makes him such a revered coach. And again, I just, I just like to hear the way he speaks. Sorry, my favorite baldy. Definitely. Yeah, the training is a experience. And naarmate je doet, dan word je steeds rijper. And uiteindelijk kom je ook steeds weer tot nieuwe inzichten. And tenminste, als je ervoor open staat. Als je wil leren, als je wil leren van je spelers, als je wil leren van andere trainers, als je wil leren van andere culturen, dan, ja, dan, uh, dan ontwikkel je als trainer. En Ten Hag there, that little bit on development, it's so crucial, man. As I said, there's, there's been so many players at Manchester United have had over the last few years that just haven't developed enough. Is that through bad training? Is that through poor attitude? Is it a combination of both? I don't know. It's probably a bit of everything. But in terms of how he sees his own development as a coach, I thought this part was interesting from Eric Ten Hag. Naast je eigen idee, uh, naar je idee van voetballen en je manier van trainen en uh, met mensen omgaan. Ja, vormen die mensen waar je mee samenwerkt of die je tegenkomt of situaties. Ja, die vormen dus je als mens en, en als trainer. En want uiteindelijk ben je natuurlijk uh, als trainer ben je op de eerste plaats ook mens. Once again here, Ten Hag really talking about being a human being first. Personal relationships. He seems like a, a manager who's, who's... Not that he doesn't have an obsession with winning titles and trophies. I think that's going to be unfair to say that. But it's clear that his principles are based away from the football pitch. And that they, those principles have influenced the football that he has built, which and we'll speak about his footballing philosophy next. But, yeah, I like that. I, I like that human side to it. Uh, and the connection is something that so many United fans have lost over the last few years with this squad, with everything to do with Manchester United. We've lost that connection. And we, we need to rebuild that connection over the next few years. And in that sense, what Eric Ten Hag has done at Ajax, the principles of who he is as a coach and a man and a manager, perfectly aligned with what Manchester United need. Another tick. But building on top of all of that, what is his coaching philosophy? Is it purely just built? On attacking football? Nee, eh, want er zijn ook eh, momenten, situaties eh, dat ik ook anders kan coachen. Eh, dat ik mijn team ook anders kan neerzetten. Afhankelijk van de wedstrijd, tegenstander. Precies. Eh, en eh, zeker past het in het DNA van Ajax. Eh, dus bij een andere club zou dat ook anders kunnen. Maar eh, ook Ajax moet zich soms. Eh, ja, ook andere strategieën eigen maken om heel succesvol te zijn. En uh, af en toe 
ja, dan moet je ook tegenstander lokken. If you were to look at uh, Eric Ten Hag's Ajax sides and you were to look at that 2018-19 one, you were to look at uh, the Ajax this season, there's definitely been development. As a coach, Sebastian Haller coming in, being a six foot three sort of target man, giving Ajax a bit of a direct route out, just in case the, the patient build up play that uh, the Ajax philosophy and Ten Hag's philosophy is built on doesn't work. That's development. And it, 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 if there's one thing I've really learned about Ten Hag throughout all of this research, it's this obsession that he has. Daardoor de dreiging hebben en noem het de stress brengen bij tegenstander. Stress brengen? Stress brengen. He, waardoor he, ze zullen toch op, uh, ik denk dat het, wie is het daar bovenin? Is het David of is het Doesan? Ik denk Doesan. Aan de andere kant? Ja, aan de andere kant. Die daar staat bij de tweede paal. Die trekt de andere kant op? Nou, die trekt daar de aandacht. He absolutely loves to talk about off the ball movement. Clearly it's, it's the fundamental core, in my opinion, of Ten Hag's start as a manager. He keeps talking about it. He goes as far as to saying this about off the ball movement. Om uh, tegenstander te vernietigen, moet je lopen zonder bal. He, dat is een hele belangrijke sleutel in het succes. He calls off the ball movements the key to success. And again, if we're looking at Manchester United and, and where we are tactically and where we need to go to, we've become such a static team for so long. Off the ball movement has been minimal. Sometimes in a good, it can. It, sometimes in a game, sorry, it can be good. Uh, but it, largely it's been poor, very, very poor. And having listened to all of that, I hope you've sort of uh, learned and, and, and enjoyed that part of the video. Let's for a couple of minutes, take a look at the tactics board. Let's take a look at how Ten Hag applies all those fundamentals that we've just learned about there to the team. This is the team that they played at the weekend in their 3-2 win over Feyenoord at the Amsterdam Arena. Don't know why I did a bad Dutch impression there. Sorry about that, all Dutch followers. The formation is kind of, kind of not that important, really, with Ten Hag. Now, I've got them down as a 4-2-3-1 here. It could drop into a 4-3-3. It could drop to three at the back, depending on what form. And, uh, uh, as, as he said there when, when he was explaining his football in philosophy, you have to have like, the ability to, to master different types of football and different types of style. But if we're looking at the absolute core, it's going to be exactly what you think it is. It's Ajax. It's playing out from the back with the ball here. Maybe Gravenberg's dropping deeper into that position there. It's going to be about players creating space to receive the ball constantly. Uh, and a key part of that, which might scare United fans, is going to be about having two ball-playing centre-backs, making sure that they are all both comfortable with the ball at their feet. Daily Blind, an incredibly important player at Manchester United, still makes me sad that he left when he did. On the, I don't think he should have been sold when he did on the Louis van Gaal. Uh, Ma Masraoui as well, but everybody at Ajax is capable with the ball at their feet. You don't need me to tell you that. That's a core fundamental of his start of play, not... Just his style of play at Ajax. Just Ajax as a football club, right? Uh, but something that very much important to him is how Anthony and Tadic, or whoever's playing on the wings, really staying wide. Because that's where you create the space. That's where you create the overloads. That's where you create... I mean, that's kind of... That's part of Ralph Randick as well, isn't it? Like we, he always talks about the overloads. That's a little bit different because he's talking about it in a pressing situation. But the two wingers at Ajax really try and hold the width. And players, whether it's Berghaus, and look how much space he's got to cover there. I think that's where Donny van der Beek actually played uh, in the 2018-19 season. But that player, whether it's, it's obviously Berghaus at Ajax, who's that be at Manchester United? Probably Bruno Fernandes. Extremely important inside this Ten Hag system. But the wingers create the width. Haller, he's up there as a direct man. In case it's not working in the build-up play, he's there. But the team will always be moving. Off the ball movements, that's the fundamental of the Ten Hag way. It's not really about the formation. It's not really about the selection of players. It's about everybody inside that team believing the same thing. And, that, and that, that's exactly what Manchester United, again, haven't had for a long time. We've had uh, a strong starting eleven, but when you take certain players out, the, sort of, the football leaves with those players. That's not the way at Ajax. That's not the way with uh, Ten Hag. He very much plays a certain way and whether uh, Alvarez drops out and someone else comes in or Berghaus or Tadic or Anthony, someone else comes in, it will be the same style. All right.
it's sort of ingrained in all of them. And that goes down to the personal relationships. That goes down to the trust. That goes down to the loyalty. That goes down to the, to the patience from the manager in allowing the players to learn the system. And it won't be a magic wand at Manchester United. It's exactly what Eric Ten Hag said there. But if you're looking at the start of play, it's very much going to be Jadon Sancho is going to be great inside this system if he comes in. He already is great, but he will thrive inside that system under Eric Ten Hag if he becomes our manager. Can Ronaldo play that Haller role? Yeah, you're damn right you can. Uh, it's, it's Ronaldo. Simple as that. We all know where the, problem, where the big issue would be. It would probably be in this Gravenberch role. We don't really have someone who can do that. Scott McTominay doesn't have the passing range of it. He doesn't have the, he's not comfortable enough with the ball at his feet. Fred can play in that number eight role, but do we really have a number eight inside this system? Do we have like two ball playing number sixes? A little bit different. And we need more ball players. I'd be scared about watching Harry Maguire inside that system for sure. Varane and Lindelof, both more than are capable of the ball at their feet. Varane and Maguire, beep, 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 beep. Uh, well, he's capable of the ball at his feet, but he's just, he turns like a truck. Is what it is. But I'm not going to speak too much about the tactics because I'm going to do that in a separate video. But I hope inside this video, you've enjoyed that. You've enjoyed me speaking about that man himself, Eric Ten Hag. From looking at his roots at Ajax uh, and his roots deeper than Ajax, his fundamental principles of how he operates himself as a man, not just a manager, as a human being, not just a coach. And yeah, it's it was quite interesting to do this research. I hope you did enjoy it. As I said at the start of the video, please would you consider uh, subscribing now that you've reached the end of it. If you stayed here, well, congrats you to staying. But hit that notification bell as well. Become part of the community. Become part of United People's TV. I'm going to be doing one of these on Pochettino as well. I think it's only fair that we take a look at how he could bring those principles into Manchester United. But that's the sort of coaching style, the philosophy, the principles, and the fundamentals on which Eric Ten Hag has built his career so far at Ajax and what he could do if he comes to Manchester United. Take it easy, everyone.